From Sarasota Memorial and the Deb Kavanaugh Multimedia Studio, this is HealthCast, a healthy dose of information from experts you can trust. Hi, everyone. Welcome to HealthCast. I'm Allison Gottermeyer. Thank you so much for joining us today as we discuss scarless transoral thyroidectomy and radiofrequency ablation of thyroid nodules. Our guest today is Dr. Ralph Tofano, a thyroid and parathyroid specialist and the medical director of head and neck endocrine surgery here at Sarasota Memorial. Dr. Tofano, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Allison. So Dr. Tofano, can you tell us a little bit more about the new thyroid and parathyroid center at SMH? Yes, I'm very excited about the new thyroid and parathyroid center at SMH. It is going to be a comprehensive center where we can evaluate a patient for every condition related to their thyroid and parathyroid glands. And we're gonna be able to render an opinion or a medical management plan or surgical tr uh, treatment plan based on them individually. So we're gonna be able to tailor their treatment because we have all the specialists under one roof to be able to do that. So what patients are coming to the new center? Or what might they be experiencing that they say, I need to go to the new thyroid parathyroid center? Yeah, a patient with a lump in their thyroid, for example, to have that evaluated, and to figure out whether it's possibly a cancerous nodule, that would be a patient who would come, a patient with very hyper-functioning uh, hyper thyroid gland, making too much thyroid hormone, a patient who has a large nodule, but it's known to be benign and not having cancer, but it bothers them when they can feel it or see it, and maybe even is cosmetically disturbing. Patients with high calcium levels because one or more of the little glands around the thyroid called the parathyroid glands are making too much of a hormone to make the calcium high in your bloodstream. And it does that by leaching it out of your bones and making your bones a little more brittle. And it also can disturb your kidneys and lead to kidney stones. So those types of patients would come to seek assistance from us and we'd be able to help them. And not every single one of those conditions means they need surgery, correct? That's correct. That's really important. They will come and have their condition evaluated. And because we have a team that includes endocrinologists who are there to help evaluate from the medical standpoint what's going on, we may just have a medical care plan or just maybe giving them some medicine to help them. And so they may not need a surgery or an intervention at all. Some patients are so scared of the idea that they need surgery that they don't seek treatment. So I really think it's important that we emphasize that medical treatment aspect as well in this new center. How important is it that a patient who is having an issue or notices something like a nodule get and seek treatment as soon as possible? I think for a patient who has a lump that you can see or you can feel, whether it's the doctor or the patient themselves, that's important to have analyzed because it could be a cancer. And because it's such a critical area of the neck where all these important structures and nerves and the trachea and the esophagus are, you don't want to delay because many times with early intervention, these disease processes, thyroid cancers, are very curable. And a patient can do very well with almost no side effects, if any, from the treatment plans that we would render. So it's really worthwhile to come in and have that evaluated. And how important is it to, that we are able to provide now this kind of comprehensive care right here in our community? It's incredibly important because look, if you only have sort of the standard methods, maybe the patient is afraid of having a scar. Well, if all you do is make an incision and take the thyroid out, and that's the only way you know how to do it, well, then that patient may be afraid to seek care. But if they know you can do a surgery and not leave a scar in the neck, well, now they may actually come and seek treatment or maybe even no surgery. And they are afraid of needing thyroid hormone, but you can stick a needle in a thyroid nodule and shrink it and have it go away without needing thyroid hormone. Well, that's great. Now maybe I'll seek treatment because before I was afraid of possibly needing thyroid hormone and I'm not gonna have surgery. So now you have all these options to consider. And so maybe the things you were afraid of, you don't have to be afraid of anymore. So one procedure that you specialize in is radiofrequency ablation or RFA. So can you start by telling patients what exactly is RFA? Yeah, 
Well, radio frequency ablation is when we use a specialized little needle that like when you have a thyroid nodule, you have to stick a needle in it to try to figure out if there's any cancerous cells in it. And so while the patient is in the office, much like when you go to the dentist, we can give a little Novocaine or lidocaine around the area of the thyroid nodule that we want to treat. And it's usually a large benign thyroid nodule. And that nodule, we can put that needle, the radio frequency ablation needle in it, and it has a heated element at the end of it. So we can actually cook the nodule from the inside. And so we're just treating the nodule, not the whole entire thyroid or part of the thyroid, you know, like when we have to remove it surgically, we're just treating the nodule, the diseased area to get it to shrink. So it no longer provides any pressure, maybe on the windpipe or the esophagus so that maybe when you swallow it bothers you so that can go away. And maybe it's just sticking out as a lump in your neck and you don't like the way you look. And so you don't see that anymore because it flattens out and you don't have that appearance anymore. So it is very, very helpful. It's an in-office procedure. You're going right home after within about 15 minutes. You can work the next day. That's the great thing about it. And it usually doesn't disturb your thyroid function. When you take out part of your thyroid, well, you may need thyroid hormone. With this, you rarely, you rarely ever need thyroid hormone. So it's great. What is the benefit of RFA over other treatment options available? The benefit of RFA over a lot of the other treatment options available are that, first of all, it's not surgery. So you don't have to undergo anesthesia, general anesthesia. You're in the office, you're awake, you're communicating with your doctor, and you can have something as simple as Novocaine or Lidocaine to make the area numb. And by using that RFA needle, we can heat that thyroid nodule and just the thyroid nodule itself. When we do surgery, we either take out half of the thyroid or all of the thyroid. There's no just taking out the nodule. So here we're only treating the nodule itself and leaving the normal thyroid tissue untouched. That means the patient has a better chance of not needing any thyroid hormone. So the patient rarely needs any thyroid hormone. The recovery process, they're home within 30 minutes, especially if they live locally. We're discharging them from the clinic about 15 to 30 minutes right after the procedure with minimal pain or discomfort. They use an ice pack, maybe a little Tylenol, and they're back to work the next day. This is remarkable. And of course, with surgery, it's a little bit longer of a recovery process. So when this is an option for patients, this is something that they say, wow, okay, yes, can I qualify for this? Can I get this procedure? And that's RFA's advantage. RFA might not be for everyone though. Yeah. So who is a good candidate for RFA? Right now, the best candidates are those who have nodules that are in the thyroid that are large enough to bother them. When they swallow, they can feel it, and maybe they have a hard time getting solid food down. Maybe they have some difficulty with positioning or lying flat because the nodule is so big that it actually presses on the windpipe. And sometimes you see a big lump in the neck and it's a goiter or a large nodule where it's disturbing to them cosmetically, or maybe even psychologically they're afraid to have their neck exposed, or maybe they're worried that if they are you know, in the public eye, it just doesn't look so good. And those are the types of patients that would probably you know, come in and be the best candidates. Uh, for symptomatic relief and also to improve the cosmetic appearance. So what does the process look like for a patient to ultimately get to RFA? If a person is having a problem, they come to see you, what does that look like? What does the timeline look like for them? This is, a, this is a great question. So what it looks like is if the patient comes with a thyroid nodule, what we first have to do is in our center with all the expertise available is have that thyroid nodule analyzed with an ultrasound. If that thyroid nodule then meets criteria for a biopsy, one of my colleagues, probably our endocrinology team that we have with us, will go ahead and do a biopsy and make sure that that nodule is benign. So before we do RFA, we want to know that based on the biopsy, it's a benign nodule, as confident as we can be. And then once we know it's a benign nodule and if it's bothering the patient, either cosmetically or from the swallowing or breathing standpoint, then we can set up RFA relatively quickly. It really is at the discretion of the patient as to when they would like to do it. So for us, 
once we know it's benign, it's just a matter of setting up about maybe you know a 30 to 45 minute session in our clinic to be able to do the procedure. Are there any additional risks associated with RFA or reasons that for certain patients you might choose a different procedure? Yes, so for patients with benign nodules, sometimes the nodule can be so big that it may require multiple treatments with RFA. And at that point in time, you really have to explain to the patient, look, we may not get the same results as we would if we did surgery. So they'll have to balance that, okay, the pros and cons of each. Uh, when we use the heated needle, we have to make sure we know where that heated needle is on the ultrasound imaging at all times. So the ultrasound guides us as to where that needle is. And before we turn it on to heat the nodule, we have to know exactly where it is. There are a lot of important structures around the thyroid. And so the risks are very similar to thyroid surgery. But I think though, over time, they will bear out to be less as people get more and more experience with this procedure. We also wanna talk a little bit about scarless transoral thyroidectomy. It's a lot of medical sounding words, Dr. <laughs> Tafano. Can you explain exactly yeah. what that is? Yeah, yeah. We like to call it scarless surgery, right? Because for the thyroid, just think about this. The demographic is typically women and more so young women. So to have an incision on the neck, that could be very stressful psychologically. And you would have to have that your whole life. And so we have done a lot of research looking at people who have scars versus no scars. And the casual observer will actually turn their attention to the patient who has the scar, no matter how good you think as a surgeon it looks. So to a lot of our younger patients especially, and patients just in general, there are concerns about scarring in the neck. And so who am I to judge from that standpoint who would be concerned or who wouldn't be concerned. If a patient comes to me and says, hey, I'm really concerned about a scar in the neck. Am I a candidate for this procedure? We analyze that. And so if I can do this procedure and remove their thyroid or a portion of their thyroid without making a scar, that is very valuable to them. And it also is a value to me. It makes me feel that good that I can do something and provide a service and a quality of life improvement for that patient. If I can do it, then I wouldn't want to do it. So yes, it's, it's, it's a great option. Aside from the obvious that it doesn't leave the same scar, how exactly is this procedure different from a traditional thyroidectomy? Yeah, so what we do is we make three small incisions underneath their lower lip. So nothing is inside the mouth per se or underneath the tongue. Because when we talk about transoral, it sounds like, are they going through my tongue? Are they going through the back of my mouth? We just purely make three small incisions underneath the lower lip, and we use endoscopic instruments to get down to the thyroid and remove the thyroid that way. And when we make incisions in the lower lip, they heal beautifully. You don't see even any incision or scar in the lower lip. And so that's why we use that area. It's a very nice uh, area to use to allow us to access the thyroid. How long does that kind of procedure take? What does that day look like if a person is coming in for? Great question, because uh, many people think, well, this is very complicated and it has to be much longer than an open or traditional thyroidectomy and there's so many more risks and that's just not the case. Uh, I've been able to get the procedure times down very comparable to our open thyroid surgeries so that you know it's not taking two or three times longer. That's certainly not the case. So the, so the day is really very similar to what an open thyroid surgery or traditional thyroid surgery would be. It's in, in very much the same sort of day and the same sort of time course. There's not any additional preparation that has to be done and there's really not much different that we do postoperatively either. So the same patients who can go home the same day with an open surgery can go home with the scarless surgery. Great. Are there associated benefits with this procedure over the traditional thyroidectomy? That is a great question. And I think we need to continue to uh, analyze our data. What we are seeing, uh, and this is anecdotally because I haven't proven it from a research standpoint or statistical standpoint, is that the endoscopic visualization allows us to see the parathyroid glands a little bit better, to keep them 
uh, present and not remove them with the thyroid and keep them viable so that the calcium levels remain normal after thyroid surgery. I think it helps us to protect the recurrent laryngeal nerve a little bit better too so that we don't have any issues with hoarseness after the surgery. Uh, I, I think it's uh, really helpful in those areas. So I think that those will be benefits that may bear out as we continue to do this and we continue to study our results. And then alternatively, are there associated risks that maybe would preclude someone from doing that? Or, or someone would say, you know what, I'm gonna go tr the traditional route instead. I think the thing that concerns most people is that there is the chance after this surgery to have a little numbness of the chin or the lip because we work around nerves in the chin area that have uh, the ability to perceive sensation from the chin and the lower lip. So I say to patients, look, about 10% of patients will have some temporary numbness of the chin or the lower lip. And by about three weeks to three months, that usually goes away. And about the 400 patients in our experience that we have who've had the surgery, probably four have had some pinpoint numbness of a portion of the lip or the chin, but not a pervasive numbness of the lip or the chin. So it's really when the patient is informed of all these issues, they're gonna have to make their best value determination. Like, so would I, would I rather avoid an incision and not have an incision and possibly have a little numbness of my lip and chin? Or would I be willing to, would I, would I say, oh no, I just don't want that and I'll just go with the incision and possible scar. So we inform the patient so they can make their own best decision as to what you know, they value most. So how do you work with your patients to determine A, if they're a good candidate for this procedure or B, what procedure is best for them? I think the most important way to help make a determination if they're a candidate for this procedure is to examine them, see them in our center, and then also talk about the different options available to treat their disease process. Once we talk about the pros and cons of each intervention that we can do, whether it's the standard thyroidectomy approach or the scarless uh, procedure or even RFA, the patient can then make their informed decision based on the pros and cons as to what's best for them. And that's very powerful. So these are relatively new procedures that we're talking about. Why is it so important to have these options available right here in our community in Sarasota? Yeah, it's important to have these options available to everyone. I think all over the world in the United States, but especially here in Sarasota, so that our patients can choose the option that is best for them. If they don't have these other options, these newer options available, they may only have the standard open thyroidectomy, for example. And the concern about a scar may make them not pursue an intervention or care. Or the concern about needing thyroid hormone may make them say, hey, no way am I going to have any intervention if all I can get is surgery. So these really, you know, these new procedures uh, allow us to fill in gaps uh, where patients are concerned with the limitations of the traditional approach. What do you envision for the new SMH Thyroid and Parathyroid Center over the next five to 10 years? Yeah, over the next five to 10 years, oh boy, I'm really excited. I envision the world-renowned center in, uh, for thyroid and parathyroid care. We are gonna be able to provide cutting edge treatment for patients here and all over the world. We're going to be able to educate people too from all over the world and in the United States to come and learn these new techniques. And so continuing medical education courses are gonna be very exciting to conduct here in Sarasota at the Sarasota Memorial Hospital. I'm really excited about that. And I think we're going to train people to do that and go back into their community. So we look to continue our education for fellows and others who want to come see us do that. So really, really excited about that. And we also can, will continue uh, to do research on these newer techniques to make sure that the outcomes that we are seeing are as uh, good uh, as they can be. Dr. Tufano, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. And to learn more about the Thyroid and Parathyroid Center, you can visit smhthyroidandparathyroid.com. And as always, we encourage everyone in our community to visit smh.com to get the latest information from Sarasota Memorial.